Technology is a positive force in our society, making great products, bringing people together, and even saving people's lives. However, it is not always positive when it's manipulated by imperfect humans. There are always smart people trying to take advantage of this great tool that is technology. Sadly, the story I'm telling today is one such story. As someone who's worked in venture capital investment, I know too well the empowerment of capital to young entrepreneurs. The initial investment of $100,000 could mean everything to their work. But it is also the same ecosystem that contributed to the fall of Theranos, the biggest fraud in Silicon Valley in the last 30 years. By now, you probably have heard of this woman, Elizabeth Holmes. She founded Theranos in the early 2000s when she was still a student at Stanford University, having a dream of becoming the next Steve Jobs. She talks like him, stares like him. She even wears the signature high neck like him. The first 10 years of Theranos was really secretive. The machine it was developing called Addison claims to do over 200 different blood tests. But as far as the company is concerned, it was generally off the radar. It was necessary, argue Theranos, when you're developing technology that's gonna revolutionize the healthcare industry. Nobody knows what went on behind the scene except for a few early investors, and even for those early investors, Theranos was later found out to be dishonest and deceiving. But nothing stopped Theranos' story from growing. Stanford dropped out a 19-year-old, the youngest billionaire female founder, transforming the way healthcare works, a technology that's gonna save millions of lives. Holmes was such a pressworthy material then, literally every media outlet in town wanted an exclusive interview with her. Little do they know, what they're witnessing in fact is the biggest fraud in tech for 30 years. By the time she claimed fame in 2014 as the female founder of Silicon Valley, Theranos was already poised to become the most valued company in the world. But everything changed in 2015. The narrative of Theranos started to take a turn. Criticism started to grow in the scientific community first. Articles surfaced questioning Theranos' practice of stealth development because it gives no way for an individual scientist to verify Theranos' technology. Holmes dismissed this accusation fervently, citing trade secrets as the reason. But in October the same year, John Carreyrou, the investigative journalist of the Wall Street Journal, delivered the final blow that took down Theranos you up to the business offices and have right. lunch and wine and dine you. And then as Doug Matchy right. said on 60 Minutes, they would right. then pull the cartridge out and then actually have scientists tested by hand. It That's never true. worked. That's right. And then, so then when the investor would come back down, they would hand them right. the test results. And as one mentioned to me, usually though, someone in business affairs signed off and if there was anything that looked bad, they would just kind of cross it off. It was edited. I mean, it was a fake, it was a it, whole bait it, and switch. It, it was a bait and switch. It's fake. It was totally fake. How can it be? How can a billion dollar company be a complete fraud? Not only cheating its investors, but putting its customers' health at risk. It doesn't make sense, does it? Well, it does make sense when a lot of people with a lot of money are involved in something that requires in-depth knowledge in a very specific field. Let me show you what I mean. Looking at the list of investors that inflated Theranos valuation, it is our first clue into what really happened. The Watton family, $150 million, Rupert Murdoch, $121 million. Betsy DeVos family, $100 million. The Cox family, $100 million. Carlos Slim, $30 million. Andrea Dracopolo, $25 million. The Oppenheimer family, $20 million. And Richard Kraft, $1 million. With the exception of $70 million, none of the money came from professional venture capital investors. That should be the first warning. And it turns out professional investment agencies did approach Theranos but got rejected when Theranos refused to share its technology with them. While professional investment agencies dodged a bullet this time, individual investors were not so lucky. They were so blown away by Holmes' charm and what the technology represents, they invested out of trust, not of reason. Reason should be the guiding principle of the investment decision, but it wasn't. This is not to say that those investors are stupid, because they're not. Their trust was based on three very convincing facts. At the time of the investment, Theranos had a stellar board of directors. The investors have tested the machine themselves, and those machines are already working in Walgreens stores. Every one of the three reasons could be a good basis of trust. All of them together, it makes investors hard to not trust the company's legitimacy. Let's look at Theranos' board first. 
It included legendary statesmen like George Shultz and Henry Kissinger, Senator Sam Nunn, the former Secretary of Defense James Mattis, all of them are respected individuals in their fields. With them on the board, it would be hard for anyone to not trust Theranos. But again, this is not reason, this is trust. The second way Theranos cheated its investors is pure fraud. Basically, Theranos would invite investors to use its cutting-edge technology to get their blood drawn and tested. However, what instead happened was that they would be invited to Theranos and get their blood drawn while they get wine and dine, thinking that Theranos proprietary technology is testing their blood, it was in fact tested by normal lab machines. They were then given the accurate lab tested results disguised as Addison's work. This is just pure fraud. Then the Walgreens executive's decision comes in. This is the most shameful part of Theranos story. Walgreens, the trusted American drugstore without properly testing the machine, has decided to roll out the machine to the store because it does not want its competition, CVS, to get there first. It should not have betrayed American people's trust by not thoroughly testing Theranos' machine, but it did. By rolling out Theranos' incapable Addison blood testing machine, it cross-confirmed the company's legitimacy and its machine's accuracy. Walgreens had the best opportunity of busting Theranos' lie, however, it missed it out of greed. Therefore, with all three bases of trust, it is not hard to understand why those wealthy families invested in Theranos. So who's at fault? Clearly it's Holmes who cheated her partners and betrayed her investors' trust. There's no defense for her. However, it is also important to break the myth of capability. I see this often in our daily lives. If someone is a capable doctor, does it mean he is also capable in making computer programs? No. No matter how many legendary statesmen is on Theranos' board, it doesn't mean Theranos is a great healthcare company. Professional venture capital investors understood that, wealthier individuals didn't. It is the lack of reason and professionalism that caused this biggest blunder, not anything else. Just recently, I finished reading the book Bad Blood by John Carew, the investigative journalist who exposed Theranos in the first place. It's such an exciting book that I want to share this story to all of you guys. It's so stunning to see so many missed opportunities from very smart people, from those investors, from the board of directors, and from especially the executives from the Walgreens stores. They could have stopped it. They could have used those opportunities to stop Theranos from growing, but they didn't. Perhaps out of greed, perhaps out of this collective belief or perhaps hubris that they think they understand what's going on in the industry, but it turns out they didn't and they paid a terrible price for it. So do let me know in the comment down below, who do you think is the biggest contributor of this whole operation other than Elizabeth Holmes herself? Uh, I would love to hear your idea. Also, I want to welcome Each and Peter Haggison for supporting me on Patreon. Each is a personal friend in real life, so welcome to Curious Elephant. Uh, for those of you guys who are interested in early scripts of the videos that I release on this channel, which means you get early access to the video, you, you get to know what kind of topics I'm going to talk about in the coming days or weeks, do head on to patreon.com slash curious elephant for that. I'll see you there.